It takes what looks like half a phalanx of riot police to give a speech about freedom at a university today. What is wrong with you people? What is your major malfunction? Oh, and the media, they're protesters, they're protesting. No, no, they're not. They chant mindless hate slogans and smash things with rocks and hammers and set fire to things and break things. That's not called protesting. That's called disassembling not just buildings, but civilization itself. I don't think they're going high anymore. Yesterday, Milo Yiannopoulos gave a speech at a university. Those trying to attend were assaulted with paint bombs and bricks. One high school kid was there with his dad. He was swarmed and beaten. Now, during Milo Yiannopoulos' speech, a protester was shot outside. Outside. Milo, of course, was saying that he would continue if it was not a fatality, because otherwise you'd be sending a signal that all you have to do is shoot someone and you can shut down the transmission of truth and evidence and reason and language. You see, we have arguments or we have bricks. We have words or we have hammers. There is no third way. And the one tends to displace the other. The fewer words, the more people get shut down, the more that violence escalates, the more that violence will escalate. I've always viewed hatred as a last-ditch emotion, when reasoning has become impossible and you can't escape. As Richard Spencer sucker punched full force in a donkey kick punch to the head while giving an interview. Yeah, 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 he's an ethno-state guy. So what? Listen to his goddamn arguments. They won't kill you, they're just words. Agree, disagree, don't punch him in the head for Christ's sakes. Malcolm X was an ethno-state guy. Muhammad Ali was an ethno-state guy. They are revered. Jews got an ethno-state. I think it's called Israel. <gasps> but a white man even talks about an ethno-state. Bam! Straight to the head. You know, you're kind of reinforcing his argument. You know that, right? If you're okay with Israel, an ethno-state attacking Spencer, just a little bit hypocritical. I want diversity, they say, but everyone who disagrees with me is Hitler. Pick one, leftists, you can't have both. Who on the left, who among the Democrats, who in the mainstream media is being asked to disavow this stuff? Why aren't they being asked to disavow? Why don't they disavow without being asked? The left says they hate racism, but they attack any black conservative as not a real black. In other words, all blacks have to be Democrats, but don't you dare stereotype blacks. Come on. I claim to be against sexism. Yeah, try being a conservative woman. See what the left said about Phyllis Schlafly after she died. See what the left says about Ann Coulter or Sarah Palin. Just look up what Bill Maher said about Sarah Palin. See you next Tuesday word. They don't care. They're the most stereotypical racist, sexist group there is. They want you to remember. They want your mind to cast back. So that maybe, just maybe, You'll say, eh, it's not really worth it. I don't want to get sucker punched. I want to be able to walk out in public. I want to be able to meet my friends. I want to be able to dance elegantly all night without people attacking me. Maybe it's just not worth it. That's what it's for. It's not about last night. It's about the future. It's about getting you to back down from things you disagree with them about for fear of something like this happening. I mean, I get they're the daycare generation. They can't handle their emotions. No! Screaming. They can't handle their emotions. Can't handle emotional volatility, their own emotional volatility, because they were dumped in state institutions and filled with paranoid, toxic femininity. Rape culture, patriarchy, danger, danger! Can't talk ourselves out of emotional escalation. You know, when you get an impulse coming out of your deep brain, your lizard brain, you have about a quarter of a second to stop it and block it and try and reason with it. Generally, they can't do that. Try to be understanding. I look at this violence and I, I, I know. Brutalized childhoods, and in particular, a childhood of isolation. Daycare is very isolating. You're kind of thrown in there with very little parental, well, no parental supervision. Most brutal children, the most brutalized children end up ruling the entire social discourse 
And this is how you get socialized. And now they're out there on the streets. They're claiming to be, what, anarchists? And they're protesting the loss of their Wall Street and Saudi Arabian-funded candidate who threatened Russia with World War III? Bad anarchists! Look up the word. It doesn't mean no rules. It means no rulers. What has been the butcher's bill from last night? Let me run through it for you. We'll put links to all of this below. Valkyrie goddess Lauren Southern physically attacked by these protesters. Mike Cernovich pepper sprayed on the front lines. He was pepper sprayed by the cops, sure, but they weren't there for him. Gavin McGuinness in a fist fight. James O'Keefe's lawyer recently assaulted in D.C. Roger Stone spent Christmas throwing up and wishing he was half dead. Goes to the doctor, gets his blood tested. The test results go to the CDC. They say he's most likely been poisoned by something like polonium. Poisoned. Do you know what poison is? Other than nearly fatal, of course, poison is not an argument. I'm not, by nature, a hater. I generally don't hate. I try not to hate. But I'll tell you this. I'm learning.